the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. As you know, we have a series going on right now interviewing important emerging mining company executives. We've got Amir Adnani, who's chairman of a rather interesting junior miner, Brazil Resources. It's on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbols BRI. Amir, welcome to the FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. It's great to have you on. Great to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. A pleasure. And can you tell us a little bit about Brazil Resources, how you got involved and what your goals are? Yeah, absolutely. Ultimately, with Brazil Resources, we were looking at creating a new vehicle and company which could uh, fast track and become the next uh, major gold developer producer in Brazil. And, you know, why Brazil, why gold? I think it's easy to get excited about the fundamentals driving uh, gold prices higher these days when you consider. Uh, the negative uh, real interest rate environment. We have the uh, overall financial uh, issues that are out there in the in the world, uh, particularly in Europe, uh, and not to mention that you get you have ongoing demand for gold from a jewelry perspective. I think there's a wonderful environment here supporting higher gold prices, and as an entrepreneur, it's very easy to get excited about that. Having said that, there aren't too many jurisdictions left in the world where you find the right combination of the necessary geology and the right gold endowment coupled with the right mining law and political regime that allows you to want to really invest in that area. There's been all sorts of issues around the world, even in South America, about governments expropriating assets, nationalizing assets, and mining and oil and gas. And so you really have to be careful where you look uh, and where you go to develop these projects. What I really like about Brazil as a jurisdiction is really the fact that over the last decade and over the last just a few years, it has really emerged uh, not only as the B in BRIC countries along with Russia, India, China. This is really one of those emerging economies that's coming to the forefront as one of the fastest growing markets out there. But it's shown real leadership in terms of political stability, uh, putting in place the necessary uh, regulatory environment to attract uh, significant foreign investments, not just into mining, but various sectors. And the geology and the mineralization here is really world class, not just the gold endowment, but when it comes to base metals and bulk commodities, uh, Brazil, as you know, is uh, one of the biggest, if not number one producer of uh, iron ore and in various other commodities, there's real interest from mining companies and exploration companies to be in this country. And it's a vast country, so there's a lot of areas, many different belts that are still truly underexplored, so there's exciting opportunities available. So just like any situation, you know, we these, these points are uh, important to highlight, but just like any mineral exploration mining company, it comes down to the people and the team that you're able to assemble. And uh, we were very fortunate, and for me as an entrepreneur, and having built Uranium Energy Corp now over the last five or six years into becoming the newest uranium producer in North America, uh, I've really recognized the, the, the importance of having the senior people involved from the very beginning with the right and relevant experience. In Brazil, one of the biggest gold producers today is a company called Kinross, other producers uh, would be companies like Anglo and Yamana. And we managed to put together a team of Brazilian geologists and engineers that had spent their careers working for the Kinrosses and the Yamanas of the world in Brazil. 
And so to summarize for you, we've got a technical team in place now that has been directly involved with the discovery and development of over 10 million ounces of gold in Brazil. This is quite important to highlight because obviously this prior success and experience that the technical team has is what we're really drawing from to help assemble the project portfolio that we have in place now for Brazil Resources and to really advance uh, these forward effectively. The other key thing that we have been able to attract into Brazil Resources from day one was a very strategic partnership with the oldest and one of the oldest financial institutions in Brazil called Brazil Invest. And I would say we're probably the only junior gold exploration company in South America, maybe in the world, that is only a year old. I mean, we just became a publicly traded company just over a year ago, yet we already have a bank involved as a major equity shareholder. Uh, Brazil Invest is now uh, over 10% shareholder of our company. The chairman of this bank, a gentleman named Mario Garnero, who's one of the best-known Brazilian entrepreneurs, sits on our board of directors. And not only, as the, I think, is this a vote of confidence in the company, the management and plan, but it really gives us local sponsorship and access to Brazilian local capital and strong governmental relations. And this is, again, I think, important in this environment today where the equity markets have really had a tough time. Junior companies have had a tough time being able to raise capital. So if you have a bank involved as a strategic partner and shareholder from the very beginning and they're involved as in, in a major way, this gives you a competitive advantage. And in the tough capital market environment like the one we're in right now, these are the type of advantages that you really want to have. Yeah, that's for sure, because there's a lot of companies out there who can't execute their business program, their their business plan, rather, and you're in a position to make strategic acquisitions because of the relationships you have, right? That's it. I mean, it's basically, <clears throat> uh, I think when you consider that we became a publicly traded company just over a year ago, and our prospectus filing at the time was done on the back of one property and roughly 5,000 acres in Brazil. In just over a year, through these relationships and the strategic partnerships and the technical team that we have, we've managed to go from 5,000 acres in Brazil in terms of land and exploration ground that we control to over 300,000 acres in uh, properties that we control now. Uh, we have acquired our first project that comes and has a 43-101 resource uh, with it, so it's a fairly advanced project. And, you know, all of this uh, in a fairly short time in a fairly competitive environment, being Brazil, uh, is only made possible because of the strategic partnerships and the team that we have in place. Yeah, and you're in this to see these properties go to production, right? Naturally, we're basically developing the company with that outlook, and it takes time to realize production. But you know, as you as you acquire projects, as you de-risk them and take them through the permitting and the necessary scoping and other economic studies that need to be done, you're adding value and you're creating shareholder value. But uh, obviously, mining is a long-term business; it can take uh, a few years uh, or up to five years from where we are now to, to realize commercial production. But I think we've got the ingredients and we've got the people and the partnerships uh, to take us there. Yeah, and you said the jurisdiction, their regulations, their laws are favorable in Brazil and uh, they want this economic development to take place, right? It's important because for a number of reasons. Again, if, you're, if you have a population... Uh, that uh, is really adding more and more people every day to the middle class. Uh, Brazil uh, really is basically that's what's happening in the country. There's a lot of macro developments that uh, has made the government focused on creating a stable regime and a stable uh, political environment to help stimulate foreign investments that can help create jobs and keep this local economy going. And it's exciting, and I think it's, they've done a good job. Former President Lula managed the fiscal policies and the overall monetary policies that were put in place uh, even prior to him have been all carried on and executed correctly with consistency and continuity. 
and now current President Dilma Rousseff is carrying and doing things the same way, really tackling corruption head on. And so you just see good government, you see good policies and good leadership. It starts at the top and it just sets the right tone for various sectors to be able to flourish. Yeah, well, only wish that some of the developed, the so-called developed nations of the world had a similar attitude towards capital, towards development, and towards lifting their people uh, out of, uh, you know, to a higher standard of living. But uh, that's a story for another day. So, <laughs> <laughs> but it seems like uh, the developing world uh, and the BRICS especially seem to have adopted the right pro-growth policies to to make these things happen and to give companies like yours the opportunity to grow. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, when it comes to the mining business, this is very a capital intensive long-term business. And so if you don't have the framework and the longevity to realize that your 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 investments are going to be made and they're going to be protected and you're in really a a, a stable environment, it's difficult to, to be in the mining and exploration business uh, without the, that foundation and that framework. So, no, it's very key. And that's why I think you've got the perfect marriage in Brazil of the right geology, the right gold endowment from a mineralization point of view, coupled with favorable and pro-mining laws, mining codes, and a political system that, uh, again, brings it all together together got the right marriage of uh, these elements that support successful exploration and mining operations and ventures. Well, it sounds really exciting and it sounds like you're well positioned to capitalize on these opportunities that invariably are going to be coming up in the not too distant future. Is there anything else you want to tell us about uh, Brazil resources uh, of interest? Well, uh, as I alluded to earlier, I mean, besides the the team and the, the strategic partnership we have with Brazil Invest, we've uh, been very busy over the last year in making acquisitions that have really dramatically increased our project portfolio. Uh, we're hopefully a couple of weeks away from announcing the closing of our acquisition of this project called Cachoeira, uh, which uh, we announced uh, basically the, the, the share purchase agreement that we signed from a gold mining company in Brazil called Luna Gold that we're acquiring this project from. It's a project that has been historically uh, drilled and developed to the point where there are currently uh, measured, indicated, and uh, inferred resources uh, close to approximately about 700,000 ounces uh, with good grades at over uh, one gram per ton near surface. And it's a project that we feel could be uh, uh, developed in terms of both exploration and resource upside uh, to grow the resources from where they are, but to also develop uh, some good economics around uh, uh, future mining and mining cost and mining metrics around it. So we're excited that we've managed to make a good acquisition. Uh, the, the company we're buying this from uh, is the newest gold producer in Brazil, Luna Gold, and they have um, really decided to sell this project to us in exchange for primarily payments that we'll be making to them in shares of Brazil resources. And I think the fact that they're taking shares in Brazil resources definitely demonstrates their confidence in both the project that they're selling to us and our team's capability to advance this project forward. Uh, so I think completing that acquisition in the next couple of weeks will be an important milestone, and then from there we can develop the project further. Uh, we've been doing some uh, exploration work on our a project we call Artulandia, which is in Goiás State. Uh, Goiás State is one of the top mining states in Brazil, in central Brazil. And we expect to have some exploration results out very soon uh, on this project. This is a project where, with a very modest budget, we have ex applied our team's technical acumen to identify a large land package, roughly just over 200,000 acres, and have done exploration work, which seems uh, to have identified some uh, very interesting uh, mineralization based on some geochem and geophysics type work that has been completed. And again, shows the company's ability to take a concept from ground up, do some low cost exploration, add value, and unlock and create new value for the company uh, through uh, this technical brain trust that we have within our team. 
And so these are developments that show uh, at a very young age this company has already positioned itself with an advanced stage project in our Cachoeira property and the exciting exploration stage opportunities like our Artolandia property, uh, both of which I think will be uh, very interesting to follow. And uh, hopefully we'll have news on both these opportunities and, and projects uh, in the weeks to come. Uh, it sounds really exciting. And you've got a good amount of cash in the bank so and the resources to, to exploit these uh, these projects uh, when the time comes. So it sounds like a good combination. Yeah, you know, as of our last filing, we had just over $8 million of cash on hand, so that's uh, more than sufficient to, to see these uh, efforts and activities uh, go through. Uh, and that's obviously an important issue in today's uh, tougher uh, capital market environment is if you have cash, then you're in the driver's seat. And we have a good capital structure. We've got only 39 million shares outstanding. Uh, no warrants, uh, no overhang on the stock in that sense, and our, you know, even though the sh share price right now is at 96 cents a share, our last financing done about seven, eight months ago was done at a dollar ten per share, and so it shows that we have the ability to raise capital even in the stuff market environment on good terms that are uh, not going to be very dilutive to existing shareholders. And I think it's that access to capital right now that is really valuable. If as management you have the ability to raise capital on, on favorable terms and you're not going to dilute the existing shareholders, uh, in this business it's always important to be able to raise capital. But if you can do it on good terms, uh, then you can also take advantage of acquisition opportunities. You know, There are a lot of opportunities out there right now where companies are in distress, they, they can't raise capital, capital market is sort of close to some of these uh, very small plays. And so if you're in a position like we are, where you have the backing of a major bank, you have cash on hand, and you have the ability to raise capital when needed, you're really in the driver's seat to be able to make acquisitions at the right valuations right now, which is the bottom of the cycle. And you know how this business works. It's really about being a contrarian. And if you can take advantage of the cycles and the market, uh, the resource market is always going to be cyclical, and this is really a phenomenal time right now to look at uh, distressed uh, assets out there. The valuation valuations are uh, very, very much near the all-time lows, uh, or let's say five-year lows. Uh, all-time was just too much of a long, uh, you know, timeline there. But if you look at it on a relative five-year basis or eight-year basis, valuations today look very compelling. Uh, so great time to be able to take advantage of acquisition opportunities as well. Yep. And this is the value play of the market for, you know, the coming however many years, in my opinion, because there's so many companies that are worth so much more dead than alive that this is the value sector. So in any event, we have to wrap up, but we appreciate your being on the show with us, Amir. And again, that uh, symbol is BRI on the TSX Venture Exchange. And we wish you the best of luck and we'll check in with you hopefully in the next month or two, see how things are going. That sounds great. Thanks for having me. All right. Be well.